Welcome back, everybody. This is Retro Replay with a retro review of Dr. Mario for the Nintendo Game Boy. Dr. Mario was released in North America on October 1st, 1990. The game was produced by Gunpei Yokoi, the creator of the Nintendo Game Boy and the Game & Watch series. It was designed by Takahiro Harada, who also was the developer on the Metroid series, and the music was composed by Hirokazu Tanaka, who also wrote the music for Super Mario Land and Metroid, among many other classics. This was an absolute dream team of developers from Nintendo. Dr. Mario is a fairly simple falling block puzzle game, and the objective of the game is to just simply destroy the viruses that are populating the game screen. This is done by using colored vitamin capsules that are tossed into the field by Dr. Mario himself. And as the player, your job is to turn the capsules as they fall and align similar colors in a row or column of four, which causes the virus to explode and disappear from the playfield. This is a very simple concept, but it results in very fun gameplay and can get very challenging and hectic as you get farther in the game. The vitamin capsules only consist of three colors, which on the colored consoles were red, yellow, and blue. But on the Game Boy, being limited by a black and white or green and black screen, the colors were limited to white, black, and checkered, which actually makes it very easy to differentiate between the different colors of the capsules. The gameplay here matched the Nintendo Entertainment System version of this game very well. This was a spot-on port of the game and plays very consistently and is very fun and entertaining to play. As stated in some of my other Game Boy reviews, this game stays fresh because not only is it very simple, it is different every time you play. So the challenge is always changing and gives you a new challenge every time you pick up the Game Boy to play it. In this gameplay footage here, I started with the basic default settings for the game which is level zero and medium difficulty. Uh, it's basically, the, the medium is for the speed of the vitamin capsules as they're falling. You can play on low and medium and high, but the default is medium, which is just the standard setting for the game. The default setting for the level is zero to start with, but you do have the option, similar to how Tetris was set up, you can adjust your starting level in the game to add more challenge. And in Dr. Mario, you can choose between level zero and level 20, which is a very difficult starting position, especially if you increase the speed to high. And you also have the option to choose between music of fever and chill. This music that's playing here is the fever music. I do have to admit that I didn't really play this game as a kid. I was definitely a Tetris fanboy. I really didn't get to play Dr. Mario. I didn't own it on Game Boy. I didn't have an NES growing up. I had friends who did, but none of them had Dr. Mario for whatever reason. So I didn't really get to play this game much as a kid. It really wasn't until I was in college that I ran into some other guys that I became friends with that were obsessed with this game. 
and there were many late hours spent playing versus mode against each other in the NES version of this game. And that's what really drew me to the game, and they taught me how to play and taught me some of the strategy. I don't claim to be good or anything, but I know how to play the game. And that's where I really started to enjoy the game and really fall in love with it. It is a very good puzzle game. I just mentioned playing the versus mode on the NES version of this game. There is actually also a versus mode in this Game Boy version, which adds a lot of replay value to it. This game is link cable compatible, so you can link two Game Boys together with two cartridges of Dr. Mario, and you can play versus mode against another player, which is very cool. In this gameplay footage here, I am skipping forward some levels just to show you some later portions of the game. Even though this is only level 5, I'm not that far into the game. But it's just to show that, you know, as you progress through the game, as you get higher in the levels, they just add more viruses onto the screen. And they add them higher up in the screen, which just adds more challenge. I did make some mistakes here on level 5 trying to clear out these last couple viruses. Uh, if you end up blocking yourself, it's not that difficult typically to dig yourself out of the hole. You just have to clear out the other vitamins that are in your way. Or try to come up from the bottom to clear out the viruses or from the side and create a horizontal row. Uh, there's different strategies that you can use to try to clear these out, but I did make some mistakes here trying to get rid of them, and it took me a little bit. So I'm trying to dig myself out here. You know, I, I did block myself on this virus, but... Once they give me the right pieces, I'm gonna be able to clear this out pretty quickly. And now that I've got the virus freed up, I just need them to give me these black pills and I'll be able to clear this out. This level 6 ends up being my final level that I, well, I don't complete it. I end up getting a game over on this level. I make some bad mistakes with some of these higher-up viruses early on in the level, and it just sets me up for failure. One thing that I did not realize until recently, and it plays directly into this game, Mario is a doctor in this game. In Super Mario Brothers, he's a plumber. I always thought that the Mario Brothers and Mario himself was a plumber. Uh, but I later learned that that's not true, and it actually depends on what game he's in, which makes sense. In Donkey Kong, Mario is a carpenter. In Mario Brothers, he's a plumber. In Dr. Mario, he's a doctor. In Punch-Out, he was a referee. So Mario actually changed his professions throughout many different Nintendo games. And again, I didn't learn this till maybe about six months ago and it was mind blowing to me. I had never considered that. But that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video as we get closer to the end of my round here. Um, I highly recommend this game. This is a, a Nintendo classic, and like I said, this was developed and produced by some of the most genius people at Nintendo. The only person that wasn't involved was Miyamoto, but I'm sure he had some input somewhere on this. But this was an absolute dream team of developers and producers on this game, and they created a gem. It is absolutely fantastic to this day. Uh, I highly recommend this to anybody that wants to go back and play this. And even if you go and you play the NES version, that's also a wonderful game. It's very similar. It's almost identical to this. So there are, all versions of this game are very fun. There's been more recent releases of this. There were releases 
on the virtual consoles, um, on some of Nintendo's later systems like the Wii and the Wii U, as well as the DS consoles, the 3DS. These Game Boy versions and Nintendo versions can typically be played on all those. And it has really preserved the history of this game and the genius of the game. It's fantastic. But thank you all for checking out my retro review of Dr. Mario for the Nintendo Game Boy. It was very fun coming back and playing this game. Uh, even though I didn't get to play it as a kid, I'm now playing it as an adult, and it's still very fun. Uh, I really enjoyed playing this, and I plan to go back to the NES version and check that out again, too. Uh, but thanks again, and don't forget to like the videos if you're enjoying these, and subscribe to the channel, and click that bell icon so you get notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks again.